couple of days there was an incident uh, here. Um, a boat capsized. Um, there were some injuries, but everybody's going to be fine. They lost some stuff, and I helped them find it. We used the drone and, and explored around and found um, a float bag that had their camera and wallets and phones and stuff in, uh, or whatever. And then uh, while I was doing so, I saw where the capsized boat had washed up on the rocky shoreline. And this was yesterday. Now the storm's rolling in, and I expect that capsized boat on the rocks is going to end up getting thrown around pretty good in the coming storm. So I'm going to go check right now and see what kind of shape it's in, where it's at, what kind of peril it's actually in. And uh, hopefully it doesn't end up getting chewed up and tossed around and littering the coastline too badly. But uh, yeah, it's a shame we couldn't have had it hauled out yesterday before the storm came. Maybe somebody snuck in there this morning and conditions were better, I don't know. But uh, let's find out. It's always so hard to give these storms scale, but that thing bobbing out there is about 12 feet tall. And sea heights are still expected to roughly double from where they are right now. Currently it's uh, a little bit breezy, but I could probably fly the drone in these conditions if I wasn't worried that was going to change instantly, as far as wind goes anyway. See it blowing off the top of the waves there a bit. If you don't know the region too well, that's the Broken Group of Islands back there. If you kept going all the way, you'd end up in Banfield. Right around this area is where I found the bag yesterday. So I believe I can just see a bit of the hull of the boat there. I think that's some of it, so yeah, it's definitely gonna get smashed pretty quick. Well, right now, as long as I can see it moving a bit. Let's see if I can find a better angle on it. So there we go, that's the uh, boat from that incident a couple days ago. Um, it's been sitting on the rocks a couple nights, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't salvage it before the storm rolled in, so it's gonna end up having a a rough evening and we're gonna end up cleaning bits and bobs of it off the coast for a while. The tide is starting to come up now so and the seas are gonna get quite a bit bigger so it's definitely gonna get tugged out of there. Who knows where it'll end up. So some other locals uh, found this stuff and dragged it up to keep it from being a mess and uh, the some of the crew that was on that boat when it capsized are coming to collect that, so that's really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, the boat itself is going to take a lot more collecting after today's storm. So we're gonna go down to Big Beach again. Last time we were there, earlier around, I guess before noon, it was low tide and the seas were 12 or 14 feet. They should be over 20 now and it's high tide. So uh, it should be much more dramatic. Stay up, stay distance and get some, uh, get some action. Hope he smokes.
twisting in an unfamiliar way. Anyway, uh, onward. So I mentioned before that the uh, so I mentioned before that the wind is kind of coming from a strange direction, and um, this is kind of evidence of that. This part of the trail, in most storms, usually has this, gets quite a bit of wind, uh, kind of coming straight in front of the direction I'm heading, or a little bit that way. But the wind itself is coming more from this direction, so this end of the point here is actually fairly sheltered, which is sort of bizarre. I imagine that'll change as I get close to the close to the water line, but um, yeah, peculiar. Well, the boat has definitely moved. I'm trying to figure out where it was wedged before. Twenty-five foot seas and hundred kilometer an hour winds continued to batter the coast overnight. I went home and had a warm bath. By morning, the storm had left the boat battered and pushed even further up the rocky coastline. But, like its passengers a few nights earlier, it had come through the ordeal in better shape than one might expect. Some of those passengers have already begun to help with the cleanup and in conversations with me have expressed great gratitude to the individuals who helped pull them out of danger. Theirs is only one of many tales of disaster and survival from a region known as the Graveyard of the Pacific. The nearby lighthouse was erected after 36 sailors lost their lives in the area on Christmas Day in 1905. Pass of Melfort, a street named after that doomed vessel, is only a few hundred meters from the location where the capsized boat washed ashore. And while I might have found their cell phone, generations of lighthouse keepers, lifeboat crews, search and rescue, coast guard, first responders, and everyday people have saved countless lives in the area. Let's try to respect their efforts by ensuring we're taking safety seriously in and near the water.